Welcome to the second and final part of the MyTax Prep Office training webinar. Part 1 discusses setup and features available on the main screen. In this part, we will discuss how to use MyTax Prep Office for tax returns. When you open a return, you will find that the layout is very simple. On the left hand side are all of the forms and schedules that are building for your client. The middle shows whichever form you were working on last. On the right hand side are some additional features. The training section displays training articles or 2-3 to three minute training videos based on the form, field, or area of the program you're in. Next is the notes section, which allows you to enter electronic notes. You will notice three different tabs, form, return, and the personal tab. If you create a note in the form tab, this note will only be available in the form on which you are currently working. For example, we will add a note to the client information sheet. Click Save. Once you switch to another form, the note will not be available until you go back to the previous form where you created the note. If you would like the note to be available throughout the return, use the Return tab. Enter the note and click Save. Your note will be available in every form and or worksheet that you're working on with this return. You can also use the Personal tab to enter a note. Any notes that you enter in this tab will not be transmitted to the IRS or state agencies. They're only for you to keep as a tax professional. The next area is for electronic storage of documents. Here, you can select the file. A lot of clients use it as the final copy of the PDF that they would like to place here, just so that they can have easy access to it. You can drag or drop a document, or you can click on the Select File option. Once you locate the document you want to upload and it's listed in this window, you can click on the Upload option. Once you're done uploading, you can close the return. The next time you come in, you will be able to open the document that you uploaded. Remember, you can save any document type. The Quick Return Summary is the next section. Part 1 of the training webinar discussed the Quick Return search on the dashboard, but we can also view it from inside a return. This is helpful, for example, if you're preparing one return and another customer calls in, you can pull up the information and give it to the customer without ever having to leave the return you're working on. Line Help gives you line-by-line -line instructions. After that, you will find the My Tax Portal tab. When you click on it, you will be able to see the engagement letter status, your client's question progress, and all the questions sent to your client along with any answers. You can also add a comment. You will be able to see any document that has been uploaded by your client as well. If you requested a remote signature, you will also be able to view your client's signature when completed. If you requested that they review the return, you will be able to view their feedback. Depending on your monitor size or how you would like things to display, you can hide the left and right panels. You can do this by clicking on the three bars in the left or right hand corners. Now we are ready to prepare the return. To add any desired form, click on the Add Form button. You can search for the form you need to prepare. You can also search by form name, number, or keywords, for example, credit. The All Forms drop-down is also helpful. Let's say you wanted a Deductions and Credit form and can't remember the name or the number. You can simply select Deductions slash Credits from the drop-down. It is very valuable, too, when you add your state. To add a state, click on the Add State button. Select the state and then click on the appropriate residency option. Once you select your state, your main state forms will display. Then you can click on Add Form and use the drop-down to just view your state forms. That's another reason why this drop-down becomes very valuable during tax season. Click back to all forms. You will still be on state forms here until you click back to federal. The state forms will collapse for you, but will be ready and available whenever needed. Use the Quick Forms menu to add the most common forms used in a tax return. The Forms Navigator displays the forms in your client's tax return. Under the Income section, we can see nine forms that are currently supporting the client's income. The Other section is where your client letter, invoice, and other miscellaneous forms are found. In the 1040, if you scroll down to line 7, you'll notice that it's yellow, so if you try to key in a figure, it won't take it unless you override. You can right-click or click on the three dots to jump to any form or schedule that influences that line. As you're preparing in the program, you will see little plus signs occasionally. The plus signs allow you to expand that particular form. When you right-click in the amount, you have access to any form you would like to pull. 
To add dependent information to your individual 1040 returns, please open the Client Information Sheet. Click on the plus sign. Enter the dependent information. My tax prep office will not automatically insert the taxpayer's last name. However, if they are the same, you can type the first letter of the taxpayer's last name and it will be automatically displayed there for you. You can select that and hit the Enter key. It will be auto-completed. Complete the rest of the required information. For the relationship, dependent type, and months in home, you can use the drop-down menu or your keyboard. Notice how the program automatically selects whether the dependent is eligible for child tax credit. If you would like to claim earned income credits or any other credits, you will have to manually check the boxes. To add another dependent, click on the plus sign. To delete any of your entries, you can click on the X's. At the very top of the forms, you have Save and Close. The Save button is multi-purpose. When you are preparing returns, it saves your data. When a return is transmitted to the IRS and or states, it is automatically locked. Use this button to unlock the return for editing. The Status button shows all the status you created earlier. If you would like to print, simply go to the Print Menu drop-down. Select Print Return. The Print Return dialog screen will be displayed. In the What do you want to print section, locate the Print Packet drop-down. Select the print packet you would like to print. The corresponding watermark and the forms will be automatically defaulted. Check or uncheck any desired forms in the Print Navigator. When you have finished, click on the Print button on the bottom right-hand corner. The return will save as a PDF and will be displayed on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Click on it to see a print preview. Save it to a desired location or click on the printer icon to send it to the printer. When you are finished, close the browser window. While working on the return, you may see these red exclamation points over here, meaning that there is something missing on the form that the IRS requires. Even if you are not finished with a return, it is possible to do a check with the Perform Review button. You will also need to complete the Perform Review process before e-filing a return. The Perform Review panel will be displayed. You can arrange validation messages by type, severity, form name, and error message. Each validation message has a button you can press to be taken to the form and field where you can correct the error. You can click on Required to bring you to the form and field that you need to complete before you can send this form to the IRS. Also notice that any overridden or estimated fields show up as well. They will take you to the form and field that has been overridden or estimated. To refresh the list of validation errors, click on the Refresh icon. If no validation errors are displayed, close the Perform Review panel by pressing the X icon. You can use the e-file menu to send the return to the client for review through My Tax Portal. As a reminder, their response will be available in the My Tax Portal tab. If the taxpayer is ready to sign the return, there are two options. If the taxpayer is in your office, you can use the Signature button at no cost. The steps for this option will be explained near the end of this video. If the taxpayer is not nearby, you can request a remote signature. The IRS requires us to electronically verify the identity of a taxpayer providing a signature through a third-party verification system for which we are charged a fee. The cost for each remote signature is $1. This covers only the cost of verification and the cost of maintaining the technology required to capture the signatures. To purchase remote signatures, click on this button or click on your username in the top right corner. Select Account Information. Select Manage License. Here is where you can purchase remote signatures. Click the check box to add one pack of 25 signatures to your cart. The minimum purchase is 25 signatures. If you would like to add more, click the plus sign. If you would like to remove a pack, click the minus sign. You can review your order in the Order Summary box. Once you are ready, click Checkout. Mark the box showing that you agree to the Terms of Use and Privacy Policy and select Process Payment. Enter your payment method. Once the signatures are ordered, you will see them listed here. After that, you can start requesting remote signatures. You are ready to e-file your return. From the e-file menu, select Transmit Return. The return is automatically locked and will be displayed in your transmitted queue in your e-file summary widget. You can expect an acknowledgement within a few minutes. 
The eFile Summary widget will automatically update and process the acknowledgement. You can view any possible rejections in the eFile Summary and Rejected Summary widgets. Another way to take a look back at rejections is to open a return, click on the eFile menu, and then select Rejection or Bank App Rejection. The first step to fixing a rejected return is to unlock the return. You will notice a warning message. If the federal return has been accepted, you can no longer make changes, and you will have to prepare a 1040X and mail it to the IRS. To fix a rejection for the state return, proceed by unlocking the return. Follow the information displayed in the rejection panel. Then, retransmit the return by clicking on eFile, Transmit Return. Our program will only transmit the return that was rejected. You don't have to worry about the federal return being retransmitted to the IRS. This is in order to avoid duplicate rejections. The Tools menu provides access to many items. In addition to the Other section, you also have access to the invoice here. The two-year comparison is also located here. You can split the return if applicable for your state. Asset and vehicle depreciation can be found here as well. Most of our clients really like this feature because it's quick entry. For example, if you have a few items to add in for asset depreciation, you can simply click on the plus sign, enter the data, and it's done. The other way to add in depreciation is long form. Click Add Form, type in depreciation, and find and select the worksheet. Choose which 4562 you would like. Now you're looking at the long form. If this had been an asset for a Schedule E, you would simply put your property A, B, or C here and information and get the depreciation. Had this been a 179 depreciation, you could do that here, as well as 4797 at the bottom. Everything on this long form can be contained. Whether you use the quick entry, the long form, or both, it will all show on the depreciation summary and be calculated on the return. Vehicle depreciation works the same way. We do have a Schedule C and D import. Once you select which type you would like, it will let you know which fields need to be imported so we can get those into the program. Choose Wrap Text to show the entirety of any sentences that are not fully visible. If the return has been accepted by the IRS or state, you can lock the return here. We also have the ability to send returns to support. For example, if you're having some trouble with a rejected return and you would like us to take a look at it, go to Tools and click Send Return to Support. It creates a copy and sends the return to our support team for review. K1 import is also available. The Message button allows you to send a text message to your client. If you have previously entered the client's phone number into the program, perhaps from the client list, the phone number will be automatically displayed. Otherwise, you can enter it. Enter your message and click Send. Interview mode gives you an interview layout, and you can toggle back and forth between interview mode and forms mode. There are two main reasons for using interview mode. The first is for quick entry of simple returns. You simply enter the information, click Next, and you will be taken to the additional input screens. You can do a simple return, a W-2, in less than five minutes in this interview mode. You can even create the e-file from here as well and print signature pages if needed. If you're missing required information, the tab will be displayed in red. In addition, you will also see a link that will take you directly to the field that's missing information. The other reason to use interview mode would be to speed up the procedure of processing new clients. Maybe you have an intern that is only putting in new clients' demographic information for you. They would ask a few questions and put in the information. When the appointment gets to you, you would click on Forms mode, and all the information they inputted would display here for you to complete the return. Keep in mind that the interview mode was only designed to handle forms such as W-2s, 2441s, and EICs, and it will not handle Schedule Cs, Es, or Fs. Notice that the chat icon is available on the side in the return workspace as well. Simply put in your question, click Start Chat, and an agent will be right with you within the program. During tax season, chat support is available 24-7. The Signature button allows you to capture the taxpayer and spouse signature if you have your device authorized with the system. Click on the Signature drop-down and click Capture. Open the My Tax Prep Office Signature Pad application on the mobile device. Press Capture Signature. Scan the QR code. Press Draw Signature. Ask the taxpayer to sign. Then press Accept. Ask the spouse, if applicable, to sign the mobile device and press Draw Signature. Press Accept and then press Upload. 
the signature preview screen will be displayed. If all parties are satisfied with the electronic signatures, click on the Consent checkbox and click Approve. The e-signatures will be displayed in the Signature drop-down and they will also be displayed when you click on the Print Return option. The electronic signatures will be displayed in the Add Signatures box. Once you print the return, the electronic signatures will be printed as well. This completes the training webinar. If you have any further questions, please feel free to view the many short training videos that are available. Thank you for listening. Music